welcome to Ukraine Today, where in Lithuania, joined by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania, Linus Linkevichus. Mr. Linkevichus, thank you a lot for finding time to talk to us. My pleasure. I would like to talk to you about the consequences of terror attacks on parents for Europe and Ukraine. How could these tragic events change European approach to defense and how could it affect on Ukraine? It's a tra terrible tragic event. Definitely, and uh, not a lot of emotions, uh, frankly speaking, everyone discussing this. Uh, but look, it was also, uh, let me remind one more tragic event, the MH17, you know, this crash. And when we were, we were discussing, expressing solidarity, uh, or I remember these killings in uh, Hebdo, uh, Charlie Hebdo, right? Uh, also, we, it was March of Peace, and I also took part in Paris. But you know, uh, Judges, your, your question, I, I, I just, when we were discussing uh, in our midst in the Council of Ministers of European Union, I also said that it's a big drama, killing of uh, Charlie Hebdo. Uh, but uh, in Ukraine at that time, uh, almost the same number of people killed almost every day. And how many people should be killed in order to say that Je suis Ukrainien, as it was by Je suis Charlie, remember this uh, slogan. And that was uh, like, also answering to your question, understanding that all these uh, tra tragedies which are taking place, uh, they cannot be solved at expense of each other. And although uh, these uh, events in Paris now have big res resonance, a lot of discuss discussions, doesn't mean we should put, a sh put aside what's happening in Ukraine, because it's nothing good happening, frankly, and no irreversibility of any stabilization process. Uh, so that would be my answer. So when we uh, came to Ukraine with the official visit together with my colleague from Sweden, uh, straight from the meeting of Council of Ministers, uh, straight after these events, it was just, just to, to, to assure uh, Ukrainian people that the uh, issue of Ukraine or, or, or this Russian aggression against Ukraine is standing quite firm in our agenda and will be as long as it will be necessary. So it has effect always emotions taking place, but doesn't mean that we should forget some crisis just at the expense of others. And, and this, is, this, is, this, is what, this would be my answer to your question. But how could you explain these two approaches? France attacked uh, these positions immediately after terror attacks in Paris, but concerning Ukraine, EU pushes Kyiv to sit at the round table with a terrorist and fulfill Minsk agreement permanently violated by Kremlin-backed rebels. Exactly, that should be reminded. I, I said publicly, when we uh, expecting that Ukraine will take important decisions with regard to decentralization, we have to create uh, preferable environment for that and uh, I would believe obligatory just to demand and to push uh, Russia first of all because Russia behind that Russia can make influence uh, Russia can make difference uh, first with regard to the access to the border I mean observers or sea observers the border between Russian Federation and Ukraine which is not happening as we know border is not controlled and military equipment and military personnel that still can go through that border without any control also uh, they must uh, withdraw uh, military equipment uh, from the border, which is not happening as well. There are some maneuvers, but we have we got information that it's just maneuvers, but not withdrawal. Not, not talking about uh, military equipment from the territory of Ukraine. Also military personnel. So all, all these aspects, definitely who is behind? Uh, Russian Federation is behind. So it must be reminded. And when you're saying uh, why it is that, so I, I can answer that at least uh, what, what I said yesterday being in Ukraine or during our discussions in Brussels or wherever, or during our discussions UN Security Council, as you know, we have still seat, non-permanent seat in this council, uh, what will be given to Ukraine, by the way, soon. So Ukraine will be member of non-permanent member of Security Council next year. Uh, we are doing that everywhere. And uh, I agree with you, it shouldn't be double treatment. Uh, what France is doing uh, in attacking positions of ISIL in Syria, uh, it's kind of, you know, trying to react to these killings in Paris, of course. It's emotional. They're firing back, so to say. But uh, I'm also questioning uh, the possibility to have coalition 
with those who are not partners in the regions. They're not partners in the, in the, in the crisis, uh, not only in Ukraine, but also in Syria. So this is really a big question mark. And we should judge about possible potential partnership only by deeds, but not by stand, statements, intentions, because as I said so far, I do not see any partnership. So that would be again my, my comment on this. Could the UN and the USA sacrifice Ukraine to Putin's help in the fight with ISIS? What could, could happen, I b believe I will not go into this space of, you know, so to say, uh, could be uh, con contemplations because it will be not productive. But I, I'm telling about risks. I'm saying wh why, why I see no logic sometimes and believe these countries also will measure many times before doing something. Of course, we all can be victims of some wrong, so to say, approach or wrong assessment. But it's our task not to do that, our task not, not to make it possible. And, and I believe we really should be very active in the discussions and in the finding out what's happening, assessing situation and acting in the right way. Emotionally, I, I understand the call to fight with terrorism. But you can call, cannot uh, make coalitions uh, with terrorists uh, when fighting with terrorists, so it's not logic, and I believe this is also the case. We are not very happy with the coalition of Russia, Iran, Hezbollah, and the uh, Assad regime in Syria, which is de facto emerging. So this is not coalition to fight terror, in my view. Uh, a lot of aspects should be discussed. Of course, we have to concentrate fight to terrorism, but we should understand uh, what are our positions, what is our initial stance, uh, and what are the potential uh, possibilities to cooperate. Don't you think that Russia is a unique country which benefits from this situation? Now it's trying to restore its impact as a global player, and this attempt seems to be successful. Yeah, it is, uh, yeah I agree. There are some aspects to restore or to keep uh, to, to keep this, uh, so to say, influence. Uh, but the methods are lamentable to create frozen conflict and control. So it was not only in Syria these at attempts, but also in South Ossetia, Abkhazia, Transnistria, if you want, Crimea, by the way, let's mention. So this is really the same methods applied. And uh, this is really not, not, not acceptable. What should Ukraine do in this case? Because you might know that uh, the situation in Donbass is again deteriorating. It's exactly, we have the only means of to keep pressure sanctions, as you know, and now time approaching to take decision about extension. I, I believe we, have, we must do that, because uh, for the reasons I told, and in December we should take decision. I hope there will be decision to extend sanctions. I mean, I'm not happy with the sanctions language, because it's not the best language to talk, but these are used uh, just for the reason when partners are not listening and not, not changing anything in the, in the political stance and the agenda. And uh, I believe we will con continue with the same pressure uh, until, until the situation will be changed. In this uneasy situation in Europe, doubtless when I have some fears about its security. As you know that Baltic states are often mentioned as a possible next target of Putin. Do you have still some concerns talking about possible invasive plans of Kremlin? Yes, there are mentioned, but you know, uh, we should admit uh, those who are following the situation in a more professional way, not only driven by emotions, that we are really in a completely different situation. We are members of European Union, we are members of NATO with all consequences. So we are included in this defensive, defensibility segment and defense planning and uh, all these decisions about credible defense, uh, credible security were taken in previous uh, NATO summit in Wales. Now we're pre preparing for the net, next NATO summit in Warsaw next, ne next year. I, I have no doubt it will be also successful because in the same spirit we'll, uh, we will continue to implement decisions which have to do with the security of our old territories without any caveats, gray zones, same standards, and uh, our countries are included. Psychologically, people are not relaxed, it's true. But no, no reason to, to be panic. Another story around our region. So we cannot be indifferent and relaxed looking around. And that creates this nervousness, uncertainty, um, which is explainable maybe psychologically. But uh, in fact, we have no reasons to doubt security guarantees provided by NATO. So this, this is also explains a lot. For instance, in April, the Russian Navy conducted activities close to our economic border, 26 days out of 30, which is legal. It could be done. There are mechanisms how to inform, but it looks very strange, right? Such a, such a so to say, actions, not only, by the way, close to uh, our economic border, but sometimes even 
entering our economic zone, de facto, not a jure, without, without any information, even ordering civilian ships to change the course, for instance, which also not confidence building, uh, very, very, very difficult to comment the situation. So as I said, it will not change in any way what we are doing, and we will not be aggressive. We have no plans of any aggression, but no one should be doubt that we will defend our people. Mr. Nikevichus, thank you a lot for finding time to talk to us. Thank you. The Queen. I'm Margarita Sitnik, together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania from Vilnius.